When I think of a cartoon or TV show I really enjoy that doesn't get enough recognition, Mission Hill comes to mind. Written by former head writers and executive producers of The Simpsons, Bill Oakley and Josh Weinstein in 1997, the show was originally called The Downtowners, but this was changed because it was too similar to an MTV show called Downtown. Mission Hill centers around 24-year-old Andy French, an aspiring cartoonist who lives in a cool apartment with his roommates, Jim and Posey. Their dog, Stogie, also roams around, chewing anything in sight. Andy's younger brother, Kevin, moves in, and we follow their everyday life as Andy works at a waterbed store with his friend Gwen, who he has a crush on, and Kevin, as he goes to school with his friends, Toby and George. Their life isn't too out of the ordinary, but it is quite interesting. One reason for this is the people who live in their apartment building. Gus and Wally are a gay couple in their 60s. They frequently argue, but always make up at the end of the day. Carlos and Natalie are a couple in their late 20s. They are always holding their baby, which is referred to as Baby Nameless. Carlos is a struggling artist and a stay-at-home dad. Meanwhile, Natalie is a professor at a local college. The last character worth discussing is Andy's boss, Ron. He is very sleazy, always trying to leave work to party and hang out with women. In part one of the episode titled Unemployment, Ron is arrested for tax evasion and sentenced to five years in prison. After this, Andy gets a job with Jim at the ad agency. 18 episodes were written for season one of Mission Hill. The pilot episode titled The Douchebag Aspect premiered on the WB on September 24th in 1999. Two weeks later, episode three was shown instead of episode two. This was a really strange thing to do. However, ABC did the same thing with the Clerks animated series, airing episode two and four instead of in order starting with the pilot. After airing only two episodes, network executives pulled the show from the WB's lineup. The reason for this was because the show didn't immediately bring in huge ratings. Mission Hill was brought back in the summer of 2000. Episodes four, five, six, seven, and eight were shown. Oddly enough, episode two titled, Andy Joins the PTA, never aired on the WB. After this short seven episode run on the network, the WB canceled the show, not even giving this amazing cartoon a chance at one full season. Luckily, Mission Hill was picked up by Adult Swim in 2002, and the show had a second life. Every episode was shown, so fans of Adult Swim got the full viewing of the series and absolutely loved it. Mission Hill has a great story and very memorable characters. Every episode comes with a new adventure, whether it's Andy trying to balance his 9 to 5 with pursuing his career, or Kevin getting drunk for the first time. Whenever you watch Mission Hill, a great time is guaranteed. I really like the bright colors used in the show, and it just has a certain feel to it that's comforting. After a solid run of 13 episodes on Adult Swim, Mission Hill gained a cult following and received high praise from viewers all around the world. Mission Hill won an award from GLAAD for having a positive reception of a gay couple. Also, the show received the 2000 Pulsanella Award for the best series for all audiences. This noted the show's design and unique style, along with its honest viewpoint of moral and sexual issues. On November 29th of 2005, Warner Home Video released the full series on DVD. Interestingly enough, some of the original songs used in episodes were replaced on this DVD. The last five episodes planned for season one were written, but never fully produced. However, animatics and full strip reads for these episodes do exist, but most of them are lost to this day. Full descriptions of the unproduced episodes can be found online. Episode 14 is titled, Meditations on a Career in Advertising. During this episode, Andy and Jim are working on a chef account at the ad agency. 
Both are trying hard to get the work done. However, Jim ends up getting all the credit. The secondary plot is about Kevin, Toby, and George buying a fancy porta potty because Griffo and Sea Dog take over the boys' bathroom. Episode 15, titled To Grandmother's House We Go or Freaky Weekend in the Crappy Crud Wagon, revolves around Andy, Kevin, Posey, and Jim taking a road trip to Andy and Kevin's grandma's house on Memorial Day. Gus and Wally are tasked with taking care of Stogie while the crew is gone. Somehow, Andy locks Kevin in the trunk, and while on the road trip, Jim, Posey, and Andy get into an argument while debating if they should go to a casino, their grandma's house, or lay in a field of sunflowers. The next episode is titled Pretty in Pink, or Crap Gets in Your Eyes. It centers around Andy and Gwen having a rough point in their relationship. Gwen breaks up with Andy, and he makes a big mistake. After a long night of drinking, Andy sleeps with Stacy, who is Jim's assistant. The plot twist comes when we find out Stacy loves Jim and made a big mistake as well. This is the only unproduced episode that has full animatics with voiceovers available online. So you can watch it in black and white. Episode 17, Death of a Yell Man, starts with Kevin trying to fix a bad haircut. He messes up and ends up shaving his head bald. Toby and George think Kevin is dying when they see his hair gone. Andy and Jim are fighting their way through traffic as they keep getting cut off by yuppie SUV drivers. Meanwhile, Kevin's friends George and Toby ask the head of Yell to let Kevin into the university as his final wish. The 18th and final episode of the series is titled Bye Bye Nerdy. Season 1 planned to go out with a bang, as this episode centers around Kevin accidentally showing up in the background of an adult film. His parents are worried to death when they find out and decide to move Kevin back home. Mr. and Mrs. Hill quickly regret this, as they notice having Kevin around is killing their romance. It's always been a mystery if full animatics and voiceovers were completed for episodes 14, 15, 17, and 18. Word of Mission Hill went quiet for years, and finally, a couple years ago, Bill Oakley and Josh Weinstein announced a new project. A continuation of Mission Hill titled Gus and Wally. This new series will focus on Gus and Wally while still continuing the story of Andy and Kevin. While writing the script for this video, I decided to reach out to Bill Oakley and ask some questions about the new show. He replied, saying, Unfortunately, it has been rejected by HBO Max, Paramount Plus, Hulu, and Prime Video. I responded to the tweet asking if a pitch pilot was made for the new show also asking about any other Mission Hill lost media. One tweet later, and Bill said there isn't a pilot episode, only documents and pitch material. As I was finishing up the strip, I decided to ask Bill if he would like to be a part of this video, so we could discuss Mission Hill and get an update on the new show. He agreed, and we set up a time and date to do an interview. I was very excited to do this and speak with Bill about Mission Hill. He told me some exclusive information, and I had a great time hearing about my favorite show from the creator himself. Hey, Bill. This is Zach. Hey, it's Bill. Hey, how are you doing? I am good. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Having a great day. Excellent. And really appreciate you doing this, too. Pleasure to speak with you. Oh, thank you. I'm excited to see what you come up with for this whole Mission Health thing. It sounds like it's going to be good. So I'm a big fan of the show, and I cover Lost Media. Are you aware of what Lost Media is? Like Lost yeah. Episodes and things? Uh-huh. Yeah, so I was, you know, I know there's a few unproduced episodes for Mission Hill. I just figured it'd be a great video to make. Absolutely. So, yeah, this Mission Hill. So, uh, first thing I was wanting to ask you, how did you and Josh Weinstein come up with the idea of the show? Well, you're recording this, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I think that part of the idea was 
there were a couple of different ways that we different, different elements that contributed to this thing. One was that on The Simpsons, because we had been working on The Simpsons for seven years, and yes. The Simpsons has no characters other than Otto. <laughs> There's no characters between the ages of 12 and 30 on huh. The Simpsons, in The Simpsons universe. And Otto is not that fun to write for. Um, so we were like, well, what if we did a show where most of the characters were between 12 and 30? And we were like, well, what would that mean? It mean that the, I mean, so we could have kind of put it together a uh, a universe of characters that were kind of roommates, and you know they had the family connection, the brother, a little brother, and a big brother, and it was also that was one inspiration. The other was there was a whole bunch of um, there. There was a boom in kind of the whole independent comic scene in the early to mid '90s, and a yeah, lot yeah. of really great comics like the you know, like Eight Ball. And uh, the whole Buddy Bradley saga uh, uh, from Peter Bag and uh, Optic Nerve, and we loved all those comics. And we we're kind of like, well, what, let's bring the whole vibe of that type of thing to a TV show, as well. And we kind of combined that all into one. There's also another show that we loved that was actually on the MTV called Austin Stories, which had a similar vibe in some ways. And it was the kind of the, the all of those things combined to give us the, the elements that we put together to make Mission Hill. Um, and that was, that was where it came from. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so basically something for like the, like the late teen to 20 year old aspect of life. Yeah, exactly. And dealing with all the stuff that you don't get to deal with on the Simpsons, like problems with dating in high school and, you know, yep. like there, there, the kind of, there's a whole universe of, of situations and problems that we never got to deal with on the Simpsons. Uh, that provided the fodder for the story of Submission Hill. Okay, I understand. So when you pitched the show to the WB, did they have good, like, reception to it? Because I heard they had big well, plans. No, go ahead. They, I'll tell you, the WB was not the first place we pitched it to. We This was like, there was a, it was a very different time back then because, yeah. Um, people like well, first of all, there wasn't most people did not have cable TV. There were there mm-hmm. were five broadcast networks, uh, including Fox and WB, and that was most mostly where TV went. Sometimes TV went on cable, but cable didn't have the money to make shows like animated shows that cost a million bucks per episode. We pitched it to NBC, which didn't like it. Um, it was not too it was not what they were they were doing in that must see TV era, um, and we pitched it to uh, Fox which also passed. Fox always passed on everything we pitched. Very annoying group of wow. people there. Um, and uh, the WB. And WB was very interested in it. Um, and they, the, um, the thing was that at the time that we pitched it to the WB, it was a brand, it basically was a new network and they didn't have any idea of what the network was going to be. And oh, okay. what kind of vibe it was going to have. And so they're very excited to get the show. But the thing is, in the two years it took between the time that we pitched the show and the time that it was finally done, they suddenly decided they were the Teenage Girls Network <laughs> because they had such success with Buffy the Vampire Slayer and then later all those other shows like Charmed and Roswell and all that stuff. It's like oh, that's they were right. The show, they were the network that was doing one-hour drama shows for teenage girls. And Mission Hill, by the time it arrived, was already kind of an orphan. Oh, wow. So... So they were real hot on it at first, and then by the time they got there, you know, what they wanted to do, they wasn't so hot on it anymore. They were hot. I mean, some people were hot on it. Like, the thing is, like the, they just didn't have a place to put it, you know? Yeah. That was the other problem with TV, with TV back then is, like, if you didn't have your show on in the right time slot, you were dead. Like, now, there's no, no such thing as time slots. You know, your show comes out on Netflix or whatever or HBO Max. It doesn't matter when people watch it. But back then, if you did not, if you didn't get good ratings during the time that you were broadcast, your show was canceled. Um, yeah. And so our show was put on uh, on Friday night, which is not an ideal night for TV anyway, with all the other comedies that WB had. And they were all, those shows were all left over. They were shows targeted towards the African-American audience. They were the Steve Harvey show and the Jamie Foxx show, and uh, which were pretty successful but were not yeah. like they weren't compatible with Mission Hill. So they put Mission hmm. Hill on at eight o'clock and then Jamie Foxx and Steve Harvey on after it. And immediately like people were not watching Mission Hill. And not only that, it was damaging, really damaging the ratings of Steve, of Jamie Foxx and Steve Harvey 
think it was two weeks later we were canceled. Wow. So it was kind of like the odd man out of all the shows. Absolutely. It, it, certainly, wow. it really was. It couldn't have been more uh, of, of the wrong place, wrong time thing. Mm, yeah, that's pretty much like when I checked on it with research and things, I pretty much found out that they wanted it to be like as big as the Simpsons right away. Is that kind of true? Well, obviously they would want that, but I think they would have been satisfied with it doing it pretty well. And the fact of the matter is it's a show that was not, it wasn't really appropriate for broadcast television at all. It should have been on cable, which it later was. Um, And I think that, yes, they were hoping that it would be huge, but it was not like, it wasn't meant to be on their crazy network. And it is a show that obviously it's also a cult type of show to begin with. You know, it's not a show of, but it's not a show for the average viewer. That's true. Yeah. Unique concept. So yeah. for mission Hill, 18 episodes were written for season one and only 13 were fully produced. Correct. Yes. Um, in fact, what I should make it clear, they actually didn't order the five. They were so, everybody was really, high on Mission Hill. They yeah. w- Once we finished the first 13, they were like, we love this, and they ordered five more. And so it wasn't all ordered. It wasn't ordered as 18. It was ordered as 13, and then it was such a success <laughs> before it was broadcast that they loved it, and they ordered five more. So yeah, a total of 18 were written, yes. Oh, okay, I understand. So was there was there ever a Mission Hill, like a movie planned? No, no. We never got anywhere near that near that gotcha uh, i mean we never the show barely got off the ground before it was dead it was like it was so canceled so quickly um but as i said we had two years two to two and a half years of time when we were living in blissful ignorance before it ever (laughs) was broadcast yeah oh okay do you remember the oblongs i do i don't think i ever saw it and i don't even know was it on wp as well i don't even remember yeah, actually, uh, WB, it was Mission Hill, The Oblongs, and Baby Blues. All three of those shows, kind of the same thing. They canceled them out, and then they went to Adult Swim later on. Yeah, uh, I do remember hearing about it, yeah. When WB canceled the show, how did you like move on to get it to Adult Swim? Well, I think that they didn't – they dangled the idea that the show was going to come back. They canceled the show, and then they're like, we're going to put it on during the summer. And then they, so they put it on during the next summer, also doing no promotion or whatever for it. And it also didn't do anything. Um, and they broadcast a few more episodes. Um, then adult, it just, uh, as far as, then it just showed up on Adult Swim. This is the weirdest thing. We had nothing to do with it appearing on Adult Swim. It's just oh, like, wow. We had, it, I think what happened was Warner Brothers, which also in Adult Swim was like, give us a whole bunch of cheap, <laughs> cheap shows that we already have that we can, load up on this Adult Swim thing that we're starting on the Cartoon Network and Cart- and Mission Hill was one of them. Um, and so we never heard of th- we were never contacted once by anyone from Adult Swim. Um, but the show ran for like five years. They, was, they ran the same 13 episodes over and over and over and over again. And that's where all the fans come from to today, you know, because people, it certainly did get its fair shot on Adult Swim. Uh, and I gather it was successful enough for them to keep rerunning it you know, for years, as well as on Teletoon in Canada, where it, it re-ran, too. Yeah, for sure. I remember uh, me and my brother, we used to stay up all night watching Adult Swim, and that's that's when I first watched Mission Hill, you know, and absolutely loved it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it, it was exciting that it got that second life, although not only, you know, like, it wasn't really, a, it wasn't the thing that we were involved in. It was clearly a corporate transaction between one okay. arm of Warner Brothers and another arm of Warner Brothers. Gotcha. Well, when when it started to get more popularity through Adult Swim, did you all think of like maybe trying to pitch a season two? We're doing we're actually literally doing that right now. Um, we never pitched it to Adult Swim because Adult Swim doesn't have any money. That's the only thing. Like the thing about Adult Swim is their shows are very very cheap for the most part, or at least they were back then. And Mission Hill was like a prime time show where it was expensive. Like this, it was, you know it didn't have a Simpsons budget, but it had a King of the Hill budget and so like it just wasn't in the cards to do another season for them at the time okay i understand because yeah i think i remember in like 2018 um i messaged you i remember you opened your dms for a day or something and i messaged you and you said it was just like the worst thing working with the wb but you really loved making the show yeah 
I think it's that working with the WEP was great until it wasn't. Like they, got, they were very supportive, and then the show got bad ratings, and then they, it was bad, <laughs> and then it was bad. Uh, but uh, they, uh, yeah, we're. I, I would love to bring back the show, and that's as I said. I guess we're going to talk about that. That's something that is in the works, but also is still having to say we're still going through. The, it's never. It's not any easier today to sell the show than it was in 1998, um, because networks are just as annoying as they always were. Okay, I understand. Just a question that came into mind, um, just kind of for the lost media community. When you was making the show at first, was there any like early pilot episodes that never aired or anything like that? No, there was not. There was not. We did not have any uh, leftover stuff like that. There was one script. I can tell you, there was one script that was not ever finished that was a episode about Carlos and Natalie. Um, but we decided that Carlos and Natalie would just, just wait till season two to get their full episode. So we didn't, we didn't finish the episode, uh, but it was a good script from Dan McGrath. Oh, okay. Was that episode 19 or just a random in the middle? It was a random one in the middle. It was like a number six, number seven or eight or something, but it got, it, it, it didn't actually ever get finished. And then another thing I was wondering, so, uh, I wrote the script for the video, and when I was looking through YouTube trying to find the unproduced episodes, I found um, like a part of episode 15 and then the full animatic and voiceover for 16. So I was yeah. wondering. Was and the, the scripts are also available. Yeah. I'm sure you already found them. Um, yes. The scripts for all five are online, and those pieces of animation uh, are online as well. Were the animations and voiceovers for episode 14, 17, and 18 done as well? They were done, but I don't know where they are. <laughs> oh, okay. And I have the Mission Hill DVD that was released in 2005. Um, it's They say okay. online that, oh, yeah, that's, i got to have that. And it's, uh, it's definitely um, something I've seen online, though. They said they planned to put all of the the animatics of the unfinished episodes on the DVD. Was that true? I think it was, but they didn't want to pay the actors. The whole DVD, it was a cheapo thing. As you may know, like it doesn't have the original music uh, because they didn't want to pay for the original music that's in this series. Um, so a lot of it has been replaced with, with free or cheap or free music. And yeah. they also, uh, they did not want to put those animatics on there because I think it involved having to pay the actors more. So that's why they're not on there. Oh, okay. So it probably was just a money thing where they'd have to pay yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely a weird thing. Like it's 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 basically like a hidden gem of T V shows to me. You know, like not many people know about it, but when you find someone who does know about it, they think it's like the best show ever, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Know? you. I, I I am always happy to hear that. Just another question that popped into my head. So the Republican vampire, was he based on Marilyn Manson loosely? Um, he said he was a fan of Marilyn Manson. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he was – I think he was loosely based on Marilyn Manson, I suppose, but he was a conglomeration of a lot of different things. As the show went on, like say it you know, went into at least the five other episodes produced, was there going to be like any other characters introduced? Not in season one. Um, we didn't have any other characters that were on the drawing board. I think we just wanted to continue to tell stories with the existing characters, uh, and we were we, we didn't have any intention on bringing on anyone new in, at least back then. Okay, I'm pretty sure I read this somewhere. Andy is he's loosely based on the creator of The Simpsons, right? He's not. He would not be until later seasons. Like Andy is based on just a conglomeration of different types of people that that Josh and I knew, and kind of he's also kind of um, both the characters in that movie, that Kevin Smith movie, Chasing Amy, uh, which I think oh really like one of the guys yeah one of the Ben Affleck and the other guy was that guy what's that guy's name who was the star my name is Earl um, Jason Lee yeah yeah he was kind of a combination of those two guys oh um, okay in that movie. And Kevin was like the little brother in that movie, Welcome to the Dollhouse. Actually, both of those were models for that. Anyway, um, the whole plan for Andy was that, that we had a 10-season plan, was that he would have he would become a cartoonist. He would gradually – he always wanted to be a cartoonist. He would yes. gradually be, have a lot of crappy jobs and have an agonizingly slow struggle to success, but would eventually re- achieve success and would, base, and would become 
by the end of the series in season 10 would become like Matt Groening. Yes, but he's not based on Matt Groening. The only thing that would be inspired by Matt Groening was that uh, he would be a successful cartoonist with his own TV show in, in, 10 years from now. Well, I see. Okay. So when you when you all were creating the show, was it like what was the long projection of it? Like, did you what did you write more episodes than eighteen? No. Okay. When did you come up with the concept of Gus and Wally? They were early on. Um, we wanted to have a we wanted to have some you know we wanted to have a gate couple and in in the building. Yeah. Gus and Wally were inspired by you may know that like Mo in The Simpsons, the whole prank calls to Mo and Mo's voice was inspired by this thing, this tape this that used to circulate called the tube bar tape. Like back in huh. the back in the seventies and eighties there were like people before the internet, people would exchange cassettes of like prank calls and stuff. Like the jerky boys did with like the earlier version of this too. Would to prank calls and exchange them on cassettes. Right? And there was a series of calls to this place called the tube bar in New York, where a, the person would just ask for people like Sal, Ami, and stuff, and, you know, or Amanda Hug and Kip, and the bartender would get all furious at them. That's where Mo came from. Okay, so we, there was another series of tapes called Shut Up, Little Man, uh, that were from the same era, where it was na- it was recordings of two guys who lived together that I think were a, a gay couple, um, arguing. And so we, that was the inspiration for Gus and Wally, uh, was that they were a, a gay couple that was, you know, that was pretty progressive, but they argued and fought a lot. But also, you know, they also loved each other and in a passionate, fiery way. And so then the combination of them was like, well, we want two very different types of guys. One guy is going to look like uh, Lawrence Tierney, and one guy is going to look like Wally Cox, was the whole, you know, the whole joke. Oh, I see. I know you said there wasn't a pilot episode created for Gus and Wally, but did you have any like concept art or storyboards? You mean for the new show that we're talking about? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. So let me explain what's going on for people who don't know. Like, so about a year ago, actually more like two years ago, Josh and I got the idea of continuing Mission Hill with a, with a increased focus on Gus and Wally. And the show has gone back and forth between being called Gus and Wally or just Mission Hill Season 2 because essentially it is just continuation of Mission Hill except that there'll be more Gus and Wally stories because True. the final episode of the of the show that we, it was really popular, that one with the flashback, the 1950s, the Ed Wood one. And so we were like, let's do more episodes like that. So uh, we have con- we concocted a the show. We concocted a second season of the show, which takes place about six months after the first season ended. Uh, and just has an increase of, increased amount of appearances from Gus and Wally, including more flashbacks. Uh, and so, yes, now there is art. There is several pieces of art that are very entertaining uh, that we use in the pitch. And there is a, in a whole set of storylines of everything moving forward in the universe, too. And this is a show that is currently, we're currently literally trying to sell it, but we haven't had a lot of luck with places like we have so far not got, we've so, so far gotten no's. From HBO Max, Hulu, uh, Paramount Plus, and some other place, which I forget now. But like, you know, it's still just as annoying because everyone places want shows that are going to appeal to twelve that are like that are like South Park. You know, they don't want shows like this. <laughs> they uh, people who are buying animation don't kind of want subtle, thoughtful shows like Mission Hill. They want loud, in your face shows with lots of talking animals and outrageous children <laughs> you know it's very annoying to those of us who do shows like mission hill yeah that's like that's just so crazy to me because i feel like a show like that would work like so well in today's world you know it is well also um yeah i i do too and that's why we made it up but i and especially um i think that there's just people who buy animation for tv networks all have stuff in their head like what kind of what should be animated and what shouldn't and it is frustrating to navigate that minefield that it has been for a long time. We encountered this when we first first pitched Mission Hill to begin with. I see what you mean too, because when I see new, you know, animated shows, it's like it's got to be overly funny, or you know, the writing's poor, and I just don't understand that. You know, it's such a missed opportunity, in my opinion. It, 
Yes, it is. I, I agree. And I think that we are, you know, it's, it's rare when a show like Digital is able to break through all those layers of approval that have, that are necessary to get something on the air. And it only happened at the WB because they were a new network and they wanted new interesting programming that was going to move the dial. Yeah, it seemed like that's always what it comes back to, some corporate stuff, you know. Absolutely. Just a question about Gus and Wally, the new show. So um, if it does get greenlit, would you get Tom Kenny back as Wally, to voice Wally? I certainly hope so. I would like to have everybody back if it's feasible, uh, I, and I hope it would be. Uh, I think that we would want to have every, all the original cast back. Yeah, no, for sure. So where it stands right now, are you are you gearing towards a season two of Mission Hill more, or are you still trying to pitch Gus and Wally right now? It's really more season two Mission Hill, but it's still it's, it, honestly it's the same thing with a different title. Um, and it just depends, like where the show green. It depends on the place that buys it. You know how much Gus and Wally, how many flashback Gus and Wally episodes we do. But honestly, the show is essentially the same thing. It's just that, like, we are focusing on different stories, and we and, and the way we'd execute it would be slightly different depending on which place bought it. Um, so it, it is a honestly, it's just it's just two different names for the same show. So if so, if the show gets greenlit, is it going to be basically picking up where we left off, or are Andy and Kevin going to be any older in the show? <laughs> well, these are all spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled. Uh, if this thing ever sees the light of day, turn off your podcast or, or your, <laughs> your audio now. Yeah, yeah but, shut the video um, now. <laughs> what happens is that it's about six months to eight months after the original show ended. Uh, and, uh, okay, I'll tell you the whole, I'll, I'll tell you the whole thing. We've got an exclusive scoop here. Okay. Awesome. So, Kevin, okay, this is what's happened. Kevin has gotten into Yale. However, his dad... The dad, the parents have been working unbeknownst to themselves. Uh, uh, Mr. And Mrs. French, and his company has basically been Enron or um, WorldCom, and has gone broke, and it was a big, big scam. So they don't have the money to send Kevin to Yale. So until the money can be raised or Kevin can earn the money to go to Yale, he's going to go to Cosmopolis City College. Okay, and so are George and Toby. George and Toby and Kevin uh, are going to live in a had a roommate bachelor pad in the same building that where everyone lives. So Kevin has vacated the loft uh, and to live with George and Toby just down the hall. And Gwen has moved in with Andy and they're now living together as a couple. That is the way things are when the show begins. Uh, also, George is, is realizing that he might be bisexual or gay. And so, but he's not quite sure. And so he's also dating, he's starting to date guys. And this is also something that Gus and Wally are taking interest in because, like, George's father doesn't approve. And, and Gus and Wally kind of become a substitute father figures to George during this part of the season as well. Um, that is – and then, so those are, those are some of the things that are, that are different. Um, Andy is still working at the ad agency, um, although, again, a big spoiler, uh, the ad agency is going to – all the best people from the ad agency are going to leave, like in Mad Men, and start their own agency, taking Jim along. And Jim insists that he will not go without Andy. So Andy is brought along, although he is a cocky bastard who is soon going to get his comeuppance <laughs> when he vastly overvalues himself in terms of this uh, new agency. Um, so those are those are some of the things that are just going to be happening in like the first couple episodes of Mission Hill Season 2. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that with me. Yeah, that's an exclusive for you. So everything's evolved a little bit around the Mission Hill. Yeah, but just a little bit. And it's also going to be, um, you know, I think we're, we're approaching like the 2000, this takes place in late 99, early 2000. Uh, and so it's the show still takes place in exactly the same era, but it's a few months later. Okay, I understand. Well, yeah, I mean, that, I think that sounds, that's a perfect continuation of the show. So I hope it gets greenlit sometime soon. Thank you. Thank you. It'll be really fun to do it if we do. And also, if any of these places eventually buy the show, hope I, where they're going to get the rights to complete episodes 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 as well. So we will, uh, you know, those episodes might actually get animated. Oh, so the ones that were unproduced from season one? Yes. 
Okay, awesome. Well, if anyone, any, you know, great streaming service watches this video, contact Bill. He's got a great show waiting for you. Yes, I, I, be, I would be delighted. Uh, we'd be delighted to make a show for any uh, streaming service that was <laughs> that was interested in, in getting this show started again at the same quality that it was back in the day. 100%. That'd be a great move. Well, I really appreciate it, man. I appreciate the information. And if, uh, if Mission Hill ever gets picked up, I'll, I'll, I'll voice a character free of charge as a fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. I appreciate that. All right, Bill. It was great speaking with you. I really appreciate Thank it, man. You. Have a great weekend. Have a great day. I'll let you know when the video is done. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Bye -bye. Have a good one. And there you have it. Mission Hill Season 2 is currently in the works. I would like to send out a big thank you to Bill Oakley for being a part of this video. You're a big inspiration of mine, and it was an absolute pleasure to speak with you. I hope everyone enjoyed this video, and until next time, stay up late productions.